So it's time for Ask Anything. We had a box in the foyer where people would put in questions. And then Pastor Macy or Pastor Keith would answer the questions. And then COVID happened. So the question is, do gifts of money to people in need count as tithe? And the first thing I want to say is personal giving is a very personal thing. So I am not here to tell you what you need to do. Um, it's between you and God. So don't, don't take it as a, a direction from me on what you have to do, but let's explore a little bit about what the Bible says. Leviticus 17, verses 30 and 32 says, Thus all the tithe of the Lord, of the seed of the land, or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. For every tenth part of herd or flock, or whatever passes under the rod, the tenth one shall be holy to the Lord. Tithe in Hebrew means tenth. So when we talk about a tithe, it means 10%. What does the 10% go to? Numbers 18 answers that. Numbers 18 verses 20 and 21. Then the Lord said to Aaron, You shall have no inheritance in their land, nor own any portion among them. I am your portion and your inheritance among the, among the sons of Israel. To the sons of Levi, so all of the, the priests, the, the leaders, <clears throat> religious leaders, to the sons of Levi, behold, I have given all the tithe in Israel for an inheritance in return for their service, which they perform, the service of the tent of meeting. So the point is, God set up this system. All of the children of Israel inherited a different part of the land, depending on how many people there were, and God separated them all out. But the, the Levites, the <clears throat> people from the tribe of Levi, did not have a portion of the land. But everybody, all of the children of Israel, were going to give one-tenth of what they made back to the, <clears throat> to the sons of Levi so they could have a living, they could survive. Back then it was more food and grain and things that they raised and not money, whereas our culture is more money. But the whole idea was if you give a tenth to God's people, they can do their work because they don't have time to plow the fields, to do the, the things, to have a, a full-time job. What does Paul say about it? In 1 Corinthians 9, 13, 9, 13 and 14, it says, Do you not know that those who perform sacred services eat the food of the temple and those who attend regularly to the altar have their share from the altar. So also the Lord directed those who proclaim the gospel to get their living from the gospel. So Paul is taking this, this um, approach from numbers and applying it to gospel workers. If somebody is a full-time preacher, they don't have time to make tents. They don't have time to do the other jobs that people had back then. So the idea was all of us could help pay a tithe to support the pastoral work. Make sense? So where does tithe go now? When we pay tithe, we pay our 10%. If you put on the tithe envelope, the very top line, says tithe, that goes to the conference office. It doesn't stay here at the church. It doesn't pay any bills here. It doesn't go to Pastor Macy and Pastor Juan. Um, it goes to the conference office. And then at the conference office, 6.2% 6 goes from there to the general conference to help pay for things that happen in the general conference. And then 9% goes to the North American Division Conference to help pay for things there. Another 9% goes to Nor the North Pacific Union Conference to pay for the people that work in that conference. And then we get to 
goes to small conferences. And for us, Alaska, Montana, and Idaho are small conferences. There's not a lot of people giving. So this is a way that larger places can help support smaller churches. And then there's the big one. There's Pastor Macy's salary right there. 30%. Uh, (laughs) So, but... Not only is that Pastor Macy and Pastor Juan, but it's also the pastors over at Sunnyside, the pastors in Vancouver. But also you think about the small um, churches over on the coast where there's maybe only 20 or 30 members. And you think about the um, Christmas Valley in Central Oregon, that's a very small church. And, and there's a whole lot of really small churches that don't have the same resources that a, a big Portland church might have. And so this is a way to try to help keep it a little bit more fair is and to distribute it a little bit more evenly so we can do the work everywhere instead of just the big cities and then there's a few more things there's an old pension plan that they're giving some money that they need to support church ministries is in the conference it's not local church ministries but it's like the sabbath school department in the conference or the um vbs ministries children's ministries all these different ministries inside the conference this helps to make help the conference support our ministries um a little bit for camp meeting education there's some of our tithe that goes to schools because the schools are doing the work of spreading the gospel also and then um the oh the last item was support that's paying for um other conference administrators and things that happen in the conference to be able to help pay pay for all of that so what isn't on that list well local church ministries like feeding the homeless or um, social events sabbath school evangelism the list goes on and on that's not covered in the tithe um Local church bills like electricity, water, natural gas, phone. Pastor Macy wants us to add air conditioning. Um, (laughs) um, Those aren't covered with our tithe. The Riversgate um, school subsidy, not covered in tithe. Worthy student aid. PAX support. Our church supports the Portland Adventist Community Services that outreaches to people that are in need. Um, the church janitor, secretary, and treasurer, that's not covered in tithe. Um, helping the needy, that's where this question started, was does helping the needy count as tithe? And if you look through the Bible texts, it doesn't talk about using tithe to help the needy. It talks about helping the needy. By all means, we need to help the needy, but that's not what the tithe goes for. Um, one of the things that we'll talk about in a minute. So how much should we give? Um, tithe, as we, I talked about, is defined as 10%. And I would just want to make this clear. Again, I'm not dictating what you need to do. This is just the guidance that um, from the Bible and from the finance committee. But tithe is 10%. And um, there's a discussion about, do you pay that 10% on your pre-tax dollars or your post-tax dollars? That's between you and God. Um, Local offering. Our suggestion is 5%. 4% goes to the church budget. 1% goes to the facilities. Uh, We've had to do a lot of work recently to help keep our church building up. And uh, we need to keep being able to do that. So we like to support our facilities fund and then the conference office if you look at a tight envelope when we're allowed to put them in the in the pew again the conference talks about supporting some other conference type work um what some of the ways to support is through online giving and bryson if you um, click back on the web browser up at the top there's this this button that says giving and if you want to give online you can click on that button and it will take you to tabernacles online giving um, platform 
And it looks a lot like a tithe envelope. Up there at the top it says tithe. And then down below there's church budget. And um, down further is conference and um, world budget. So we have a slide to cover this, but just for an example, if we scroll back up to the top, and let's say you got a $1,000 paycheck. One-tenth of $1,000 is $100. So to follow the guidelines that I had put up there, we would put $100 in that. And then the local church budget, that's what helps support our ministries here, all of the things that I just mentioned about utilities and schools. Um, I said 4% for that. 4% of $1,000 is $40. And then building fund, I said 1%. And so that would be $10. And obviously there's some other things if you have a burden to support worthy students, you can donate extra money there or Sabbath school or deaf ministries. If you scroll down just a tiny bit more, there's a, oh, there's a Tabernacle COVID relief offering. That's new. But right above COVID relief is other. If there's a specific fund that you wanted to donate to a tabernacle that's not on this list, you can put it there and then just email the treasurer. The address is in the bulletin, I believe. Email the treasurer and say, I want my offering to go to the head elder fund or <laughs> whatever fund it is that you wanted it to go to. And then she can make sure that it goes, um, goes there. Um, let's go back to the PowerPoint. So here's the example I, I had um, just talked about. Just so you know, the, the conference in the, in the tithe envelope has some other suggested offerings to support. There are other things that you can support to help to do God's work further out than just tabernacle. So how can we give, you can turn it in a tithe envelope. There's tithe envelopes in the back pew there's tithe envelopes on the table in the back. You can take some home. You can fill one out when you come here on Sabbath morning. You can mail it to the church. If you are watching online and you would like to um, mail it in, you can mail a tithe envelope. If you don't have a tithe envelope, you can just mail a check and say, I want this to go for and, and specify it. If you ask, Pastor Macy and Tony will mail you tithe envelopes at home. Online giving, we talked about online giving, and there's an app for that. So if you are one that likes to use your phone apps, there are, there is an Apple and an Android app for online giving. Um, one thing I wanted to point out, Laura um, suggested that I highlight the fact that when we have a loose offering, like we just took up this morning, that loose offering will go for whatever is listed in the bulletin. If you want it to go for something else, then it needs to go in a tithe envelope and you can specify what you want it to go to. Um, so, do gifts of money to people in need count as tithe? If we look at the Bible, no, tithe is a for supporting those who have dedicated their lives to doing God's work full time. But like I said, it's definitely a personal decision and nobody's going to come tell you that you're doing something wrong if you choose a different path. I hope that helps answer the question. If you have any other questions, feel free to contact the pastors or myself or the treasurer. Um, anybody would be glad to help answer questions about giving and how that works. And just as a reminder, Pat Laura noted it, but we have our annual business meeting on August 30 to go over the church budget. So if you want to provide input or if you want to learn more about how the church budget works, um, feel free to show up there. And I hear there'll be ice cream. If you go to um, Oregon Conference's website and click on stewardship, they have a lot of information in there about what they do with tithe and each of these categories you can expand it and they give a little 
written description about how, what it means and how it works.